Just how many prophecies about the future did Muhammad get wrong? Astronomical events, the end of poverty, earthquakes, to name a few. We will continue our exposition of the failed predictions of this so-called prophet. Last time, uh, we talked about a uh, hadith, a claim by Muhammad concerning uh, the last hour or the coming of the hour or the day of judgment, if you wish. And even uh, if our Muslim friends who look at that saying and try to uh, reinterpret it, uh, it, we proved that it didn't make any sense claiming that anyone who have heard him that night will not be alive within a hundred years from that particular night when he was saying what he said. And AP did an excellent job also, uh, basically arguing that it has to do with the context. That night was important for a certain reason. And the only logical way uh, to justify why it was found in Sahih collections is that it, it was within the theme of the hour or the end times. Either way, we proved without even lifting a finger, that it was a failed prophecy. Today is no exception. We are going to continue with this theme by presenting more evidence that Muhammad was a failed prophet. AP, welcome back. And thank you so much, of course, as always, for uh, your research and preparation. And I enjoy, of course, working with you because both of us can bounce back and forth uh, things uh, related to what I grew up learning, what you grew up learning, and at the same time, we're presenting evidence to people to watch, and the references are given to them as well. And in this case, we are using, as you have stated it correctly, sahih traditions, meaning authentic hadith. So no one can argue and say, well, you know, this is da'if, or this is weak, or this is questionable. No, it's found in the authentic collections. So what is it that we are going to look at today? So today we want to look at uh, even more prophecies by Muhammad, which um, obviously turned out to be failures or which are simply so vague that uh, it is hard to call them prophecies, but which also tell us about the quality of this uh, prophet and his prophecies. Um, first off, thank you so much and uh, happy to be to be back again. Okay. Uh, so I want to start by um, pointing at a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, which says, um, Upon seeing a um, an eclipse, Muhammad tells the believers, the Muslims, that Allah frightens the believers with solar and lunar eclipses. Now, I doubt that it's actually that the wording is actually um, this this accurate in uh, the original when Muhammad said it. It was probably a little bit more expanded with uh, what he refers to with the lunar lunar and solar eclipses. Uh, Muhammad would just simply see uh, changes in the sky and would think that, uh, you know, something something bad is happening or something great is about to happen. Even when he pointed at solar and lunar eclipses, which are a very normal occurrence of, That's right. you know, of, of, the, of the moon uh, moving in a certain way and uh, like getting in the way of our, you know, getting getting between us and the sun, or uh, you know, in, in 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 other cases, he thought this is actually something that Allah does in order to, uh, you know, frighten the believers and to make them think, oh no, the end is near. I should become a better Muslim right now. I should go pray, which is just a very a very funny, absurd, sad thing to think about today with the more advanced knowledge of the natural world that we have. Yeah, yeah absolutely, AP. And, and it, it makes you wonder, why is he focused on the believers only? I mean, you would think this should frighten people that do not believe in Islam, for instance, or believe in his God or believe in anything spiritual per se. Uh, they're the one who might be wondering what's going on. But it seems like Muhammad acknowledged that those people are more sophisticated than him and the group that he was talking to. Maybe he was trying to admit that uh, other people who don't buy all the stuff that he is uh, trying to, you know, sell them yeah. will just not be afraid. I don't know. Uh, we don't really know what the motive, what the motive here was. But uh, if we go further, uh, we can see uh, again that Muhammad uh, constantly warned people of this imminent danger that is coming, of the imminent day of uh, judgment. For example, uh, there is one source in which uh, Muhammad says. 
uh, about a tribe known as Gog and Magog, about about which we uh, will definitely talk uh, more in future episodes, uh, that they will come very soon. According to this report, he says, woe unto the Arabs from a danger that has come near. So uh, a danger that is at hand, a danger that is that is going to come and overrun Arabia. Um, and so it is, his his message here is that uh, everybody should be should be ready. This this tribe Gog and Magog will come any time now. They will you know probably come within a few years, maybe within within a few decades, maybe immediately after I'm dead. So be ready. Unfortunately, uh, Gog and Magog, uh, which he said would be uh, here before everything ends, and which would be according to him very soon, uh, never happened, never occurred. So I would say that this is a false prophecy, unless you want to disagree with me on that. Oh. Not at all. I mean, uh, the story of Gog and Magog that I grew up learning from Islamic sources, it was terrifying, to be honest with you. You think about these people who have probably sharp teeth, that they eat a wall that allegedly Alexander the Great built to protect himself and his people from them. And uh, they eat this wall, you know, cement wall maybe, dirt wall, block wall, whatever the case might be. And it becomes really hush, uh, transparent, so they can see through and they say, oh, okay, well, uh, we only have like a, a few fractions of centimeters left, so we'll eat it tomorrow. They go to sleep, they come back again, the wall is back again to its size, they eat it again. And they do this every day until one time when God decides it's the end times. Indeed, the next morning, it will still be transparent. They eat it and they come from the east and eat everything, you know, including humans. And that's why Muhammad is warning him to go to the mountains, basically, and hide. And uh, yet, at the same time, we don't have a clue who are these people. Where are they found? And who saw them? And the list can go on and on and on. He even says that they will... Um... They will pass by a lake and drink from the lake, and the lake will be dried out because there are so many. And when they have defeated everybody, they will shoot uh, arrows into the air, and blood will come down yeah, uh, exactly. to the sky to defeat the, those in the sky. But this is a very, very interesting, very nice topic that I uh, want to say for a special video just on that topic. So Absolutely. So what else do we have? Uh, we have prophecies that Muhammad made about the about the future and um, Muslims occasionally even include these prophecies into their um, supposed prophecies that are coming true or that came true but um, I mean look at this for example in Sahih Bukhari we find that one of his prophecies about the future before the hour comes was that wealth will be so abundant that a wealthy person will worry less will worry lest nobody should accept his uh, zakat his alms so <laughs> this was Muhammad's prophecy that this is apparently going to come true before the hour that wealth will be so abundant that nobody Everybody will be able to accept your, you know, your almsgiving because everybody will be will be rich. Is this? I mean, this is not even uh, really possible if you want to talk about the possibility of it in the economics. But on the other hand, is this is certainly not? Uh, this has certainly not come true, especially not in the uh, Muslim world. Because uh, I, ironically, I have to say, uh, the Muslim world is not very wealthy, and uh, most of the Muslim world is actually uh, struggling a lot. Yeah. And I don't think I don't think you see this environment in our time, Al. Right, that everyone is very rich now. Not all, but but you know, AP. Let, let's let's say this came to pass. Uh -huh. Isn't the alms given the zakah one of the five pillars of Islam? So how in the world are you going to earn good deeds by canceling one of those pillars? Who is Muhammad to decide that this is not applicable to Islam anymore? You see, I mean, you see the problem that Muhammad digs holes for himself and uh, uh, the, our Muslim friends come to the rescue and they have to explain it now. It's one of the pillars you have to give. So who are you going to give it to? Well, if, you, if you're not able to give it, then at least I, I think uh, on the day of judgment, you will say, hey, I wanted to give, but I couldn't find anybody. And then you, yeah, you bring said, a lawyer with you to negotiate. Yeah, good, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> You'll bring the lawyer with you. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we have a, we have a picture here of uh, of, of poverty in the world, um, and we see that uh, many nations in our world today are very very far from being so wealthy that nobody would accept <laughs> arms. And uh, I don't 
I think it is it is it is it's, it is not possible that uh, we will ever come to a world where this map is entirely white because there is no no region in which there is there is poverty. It simply is not possible. It is unthinkable, and this is just one of those prophecies that Muhammad made, which are uh, simply things that somebody who claims to be a prophet says about the future without uh, meaning really anything one of those uh is also afflictions will appear i mean the wording here is very i'm not even i didn't dumb this down or anything this is what the source says afflictions will appear i mean how what kind of a prophecy is this if, if i say hey you know what trust me the day will come and you will see it when afflictions appear <laughs> i mean <laughs> well i mean if that's the case ap call me a prophet because i have a feeling there'll be more viruses to come more yeah. infections Afflictions to come, more diseases to come. So there you go, man. I mean, when it happens, call me a prophet. I just told Absolutely. you. There is one more that I want to address here, which is uh, that Muhammad said earthquakes will increase in number. Um, and very often Muslims will post this and say, look, this is uh, coming true. This has come true. Earthquakes are much more now. Uh, this is actually not true. We can't really uh, track the number or the frequency of earthquakes in history. But if, if we look at some sources like this British uh, Geological Survey source here, uh, they say here that uh, due to the uh, detection and the improvement in detection of earthquakes, it might give the impression that earthquake activity is increasing. But in fact, uh, if we just look at the last 20 years, that is simply not the case. Uh, earthquakes just affect more people now for uh, because of the distribution of populations and the way we uh, detected them. Uh, so this again is a prophecy that is that would that I would call a failure, or at least so vague that it doesn't serve as a proper prophecy. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 even if that's the case, I, I would assure you that Muhammad or whomever wrote this hadith borrowed it from the mouth of Jesus, who also predicted uh, uh, activities like this, whether he said it increased or not. He just mentioned that earthquakes and famines and pestilence and wars and rumors of wars are signs of end time that is found in Matthew 24, for instance. So, so what? I mean, Jesus said it already before Muhammad even mentioned it. So I don't see even the significance of something like that. So again, AP, thank you so much. Uh, obviously, we are reaching the conclusion of this part, and I know we're going to be doing another part at least uh, to continue with our uh, exposition, I want to call it, of Muhammad's failed prophecies. Until then, everyone have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. And ring the bell so you will be notified when we release new content. Our mission is to reach Muslims with the gospel of Jesus Christ and help Christians engage with their Muslim neighbors. If you want to join us in this life-changing work, please support us on patreon.com forward slash International or just click on the link below.